Good day everyone, this is Rafael Martelliona Simotor, under Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in Social Studies. Today we are going to discuss the topic about information processing theory. First, we have our objectives. Describe the process involved in acquiring, storing, and retrieving knowledge. Second would be cite educational application of the theory on information processing. Now let us move on to our introduction. Information processing is a cognitive theoretical framework that focuses on how knowledge enters and is stored in and is retrieved from our memory. It is one of the most significant cognitive theories in the last century and it has strong implication on the teaching learning process. Knowledge can be broader categorized into explicit and tacit knowledge. Explicit knowledge is formal codified and easily transferable, while tacit knowledge is personal, experimental, and harder to articulate. General knowledge refers to broad information that is widely known and applicable in across various contexts. For example, knowing that the Philippines capital city is Manila. On the other hand, specific knowledge is more detailed and specialized, often relevant to a particular field of situation. For instance, understanding the specific chemical reactions involved in photosynthesis is a form of specific knowledge within the field of biology. So in the type of knowledge, there are procedural knowledge. So procedural knowledge refers to knowing how to perform specific tasks or procedures. It involves practical skills and the ability to execute specific actions. An example of procedural knowledge is being able to ride a bicycle. It's about knowing the steps and movements required to balance and pedal effectively. So in declarative knowledge involves knowing what is and include facts, information, and statement about the world. It is the knowledge of concept and their interrelationship. An example of declarative knowledge is understanding that the capital of France is Paris, or knowing the chemical formula for water. Episodic knowledge refers to personal experiences or events that are specific to an individual and are tied to a particular time and place. It involves memories of specific episodes or incidents in one's lives, for instance, remembering your last vacation with family or your last heartbreak. Involves information or skills that are context dependent, means that applicability of this knowledge is confident upon specific condition, scenarios, or circumstances. In the example of fixing a flat tire, the knowledge of changing a tire is available when faced with a specific condition, a flat tire on your vehicle outside of this situation. The knowledge may not be directly relevant or applicable. Essentially, conditional knowledge highlights the idea that we, are, we uh, know or can do may have limited development uh, and effectiveness that to particular situation or experiment. So knowledge comes in two main types. Stuff we can easily write down or share like facts and information. And the kind that's more personal based on our experiences and skills. Both types are important for understanding things and solving problems in different areas. The information process theory indeed possesses three primary states for information processing. One is encoding, so this is initial stage where information enters the mind through our senses. It involves attending to the information, receiving it, and assigning meaning to it. For example, um, when you see a red apple, you are encoding its visual portrait such as color, shape, or size, and associating it with your existing knowledge of false number two storage so this stage refers to how information is sealed in different memory systems it involves transferring information from sensory memory to short-term memory for temporary storage and motivation and subsequently transferring crucial information from short-term memory to long-term memory for more per permanent 
storage or retrieve up. Number three, to retrieve up. So this final stage is like how we access information stored in long-term memory. It involves searching for specific memory, recognizing them, and bringing them back into our consciousness, our NS. For example, remembering your grandmother's birthday cake recipe involves retrieving the stored information about the ingredients and step from long-term memory. So, it's important to note that those stages are not rigid and independent. They interact and influence each other. Encoding can be effect on how information is stored and retrieved can be something to influence how memories are encoded later. So, so, in conclusion here, uh, imagine your brain as a computer. Information process theory is like a roadmap of how that computers work, focusing on how we take in, store, and use information. Its purpose, three main stages. One is to input our senses, capture information from the world like sign, sound, smell, and touches. Think of it as like a data going into your computer app. Number two, processing. This is where the funds happen. Our short-term memory temporarily holds the information. Like files of in your computer program, we can manipulate it, organize it, or decide on what to do with it. And number three is the output, where the finally the file, um, the process information is either used like giving a presentation based on what you learned or sent to long-term storage, like remembering the presentation later. And this is also saving files on your computer hard drive. So, IPT helps us to understand how we learn, remember, and forget things. It's also used in education, training, and even therapy to improve how we handle information. So, that's all. Um, good day, everyone. My name is Angel Kaysen and Perez, and today my report is all about sensory registry. So, the sensory register process, the brain obtains information from the environment. So, this activity is short, lasting at most a uh, few seconds. So, during sensor sensory register, the brain gathers information passively through visual and auditory cues. This is also known as, respectively, as iconic and echoic memory. So, by the way, so the first step in the IP model holds all sensory information for a very brief time. So first is the capacity. So our mind receives a great amount of information but it is more than what our minds can hold or perceive. Second is the duration. So the sensory register only holds the information for an extremely brief period. So in the order of one to three seconds only. So next is there is a difference in duration based on modality. Auditory and memory is more persistent than visual. So we have here the five sensory registers or the five sensory uh, memory. First is the seeing which is iconic. Second is hearing, echoic, tactile which uh, touch, olfactory smell and gustatory taste. By this one, scientists understand less about touch, smell, and taste sensory memories. Sensory memories. So much more is known about the memories acquired through seeing and hearing. So that's all for my report. Thank you and have a great day. Attention plays a crucial role in various fields, including natural language, processing, and machine learning. In NLP, attention mechanism enable models to focus on specific parts of input data, improving their ability to understand context and relationship. There are six cases of rule of attention. Number one, selective focus. Attention mechanism allows models to selectively focus on specific parts of input data, giving more importance and relevant information while ignoring irrelevant details. Selective focus is particularly beneficial when dealing with long sequences or complex data, as it enables the model to zoom in on crucial data, improving its understanding and performance. This concept is fundamental in tasks like machine translation, where the model needs to attend to specific words in the source language to generate accurate translation in the data. 
Context Understanding Attention helps models to understand context by assigning varying degrees of importance to different elements within a sequence, allowing the model to capture dependencies and relationships. Context understanding involves a model's ability to comprehend relationship and dependencies within a sequence by selectively attending to different parts of the input data. This understanding enhances the model's capacity to make informed predictions or decisions based on the context. Improving performances with attention mechanisms means enhancing a model's effectiveness by allowing it to selectively focus on important information within the input data. This targeted attention helps the model make more accurate production or clarification, contributing to overall better performance in various machine learning tests. Reduce information loss. In this context of attention mechanisms, means that the model can selectively focus on relevant data within the input data, minimizing the loss of important information during processing. By assigning varying degrees of importance to different elements, attention, mechanism help retain and prioritize key information, preventing the model from overlooking crucial data and improving overall data utilization. Interpretable outputs with attention mechanism refer to the model's transparency and revealing which parts of the input data contributed more to a specific prediction by highlighting the importance of different elements through attention weight the model provides insight into its decision making process making it easier for user to understand the trust the reasoning beyond specific outputs this interability is valuable for gaining insight into model behavior and ensuring accountability in various applications. To summarize my report, attention is a powerful concept that enhances model capabilities by allowing them to selectively focus on important information, understand context, and perform effectively across various tests. Hello everyone, I am Salem Cañete and today I will report about short-term memory or STM. So short-term memory, it is also known as a uh, working memory. So it is the mental workspace where we hold a limited amount of information for temporary use. So it acts as a bridge between perception and long-term memory. So allowing us to actively manipulate and process information before committing it to permanent storage. So understanding STM is crucial for comprehending learning, reasoning, and decision-making processes. So there are four key characteristics of short-term memory. So the first one is capacity. The second one is duration. The third one is content. And the last one is function. And also, uh, there are uh, four factors affecting short-term memory. So the first one is attention. The second one is rehearsal and the third one is chunking and the last one is individual differences. So in conclusion, uh, short-term memory is a complex yet critical cognitive function that underpins our ability to think, learn, and interact with the world. So understanding is limitations and Optimizing its performance through various strategies and interventions can significantly enhance our overall cognitive efficiency and well-being. Long-term memory refers to the storage of information over an extended period of time, ranging from minutes to years. It is one of the three main components of the memory system, alongside sensory memory and short-term memory. Long-term memory is responsible for storing and retrieving information that we have acquired through learning and experiences. It has a vast capacity and can hold a wide range of information, including facts, events, skills, and concepts. There are two main types of long-term memory. The explicit memory, also known as the declarative memory, and implicit memory or also known as the non-declarative memory. First is the explicit memory. 
This type of memory involves conscious recall and is further divided into two subtypes. The episodic memory. It is refers to the memory of specific events or episodes in our lives such as birthday, party, or a vacation. Second is the semantic memory. It is involves the storage of general knowledge, facts, and concepts that are tied to a specific event or personal experience, such as knowing the capital of a country or understanding the meaning of the words. Now let's go to the second types of long-term memory, the implicit memory. This type of memory is unconscious and does not require conscious effort to recall. It is includes various types of non-conscious memories such as the procedural memory. It is involves the memory of motor skills and how to perform certain tasks such as riding a bike or playing a musical instrument. Dreaming it is refers to the influence of a previous stimulus on the response to a subsequent stimulus, even when we are not consciously aware of the initial stimulus. Conditioning. It is involves the association between stimuli and responses, such as classical conditioning. Long-term memory is believed to involve structural and chemical changes in the brain, particularly in the connections between neurons. It is a complex and fascinating aspect of human cognition that allows us to retain and retrieve information over extended periods of time. Here is the example of long-term memory. Wait, Joy, you could get lost in there. Think positive. Okay, I'm positive you will get lost in there. That's long-term memory. Endless warren of corridors and shelves. I read about it in the manuals. The manuals? The manuals! You read the manuals! Yeah. So you know the way back to headquarters! I, I guess. Ooh. You are my map. Let's go! Lead on, mind map! Show me where we're going! Okay, only... Uh, I'm too sad to walk. Just give me a few... hours to... Oh! Which way? Left? Right. No, I mean go left. I said left was right, like correct. Okay. This actually feels kind of nice. Okay, here we go. We'll be back to headquarters before morning. We can do it. This will be easy. This is working! Good afternoon everyone, this is Notchume. In this report, I am about to present insightful information about executive control processes. This is a cognitive function that help us manage, control, and manipulate information in our minds. They are important for decision making, problem solving, planning, and attention. We can use these processes to focus on what's important. Today, we will witness on how executive control processes apply in this scenario. Problem solving. So the company project face a problem. Let's see how the project manager find a solution. I'm really frustrated with this problem arising in the project. It's been causing a lot of stress and I need to find a solution. I should provide solution in this matter. Our company is facing decrease in sales and we're struggling to meet our targets. I'm worried about the future of the company. Hopefully by doing this customer survey can solve the problem that the company facing right now. Okay, so as what we notice, when a problem arises in the project, the project manager find a solution. She created a customer survey. So in that scenario, the executive control processes helps the manager to analyze the problem, consider different solutions, and choose the most effective one. Executive control processes also cognitive processes that are responsible for managing and controlling our thoughts, actions, and behavior. So here is the another scenario on how executive control applied. Planning. The project manager's planning her project timeline. Let's see what she will do. First, I need to define the project scope and objectives. What are my goals to achieve in this project timeline? With all the tasks, dependencies, and durations identified, I can now create a visual representation of my project timeline. And also, I should regularly monitor and update the project timeline as the project progresses. 
This will help me identify any delays or changes that needs to address promptly. So as what we noticed in that scenario, Ms. Noche created her project timeline including when each task should be completed. So in that scenario, her executive control processes help her to organize the task, set deadlines, and create a plan. These are a few examples of executive control processes. So to sum up, executive control processes are important for our functioning. They allow us to make decisions. We use these processes in many areas of our lives. Our ability to manage information, make decisions, and solve problems can be improved by understanding and improving our executive control processes. That would be all for executive control processes. The following topics will be discussed by the next reporters. Forgetting is the inability to recall or retrieve information that was previously stored in memory. It can occur due to various factors such as time passing, interference from other information, or problems with encoding and retrieval process in the brain. Forgetting also is a natural aspect of human memory characterized by the inability to retrieve previously stored information. It can be influenced by factors like passage of time, interference, or issues with the encoding and retrieval processes in the brain. Understanding the mechanism behind forgetting contributes to a better comprehension of memory function and human cognition. Hi, my name is Sarger Arpolasico and today I will be discussing about the summary report of information processing theory. So what are the topics or the lesson that has been discussed? So first would be what are the types of knowledge? So first is general or specific. So in general or specific, the knowledge can be broadly applicable or specific to certain contexts. Second would be declarative. So in declarative, it involves factual information and is expressed in statements. Third would be procedural. So it concerned with how to do something often involving skills. Next would be episodic. So it relates to personal experiences and events. And lastly would be conditional. So it involves understanding conditions for applying knowledge. So there are stages of information processing as well. And one would be encoding. So in encoding, guys, it is the process of inputting information into the memory system, which next would be storage. So in the storage, it is the retaining encoded information over time. And next would be retrieval. So it is the recalling stored information when need that. You are correct. And next would be executive control processes. So what is this? It is a sensory register which means initial processing of sensory information acting as a temporary store before further processing. So it is the information processing theory emphasizes how individuals receive, store, and retrieve information. So it is the various types of knowledge highlight the diverse forms information can take. So the stages of encoding, storage, and retrieval, uh, it outlines the sequential processes involved in information processing. Additionally, guys, the executive control processes of the sensory register illustrates the initial filtering of sensory input. So by understanding these components enhances our insights into cognitive processes and memory function. 